All right, well, I think it's time to get started. Let me begin with a word of prayer here once I get up there. I will begin with a word of prayer. <clears throat> so, Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you for this day. I thank you for the weekend just completed. Uh, just guide our steps today again, Lord, and uh, help us to glorify you what we do. Pray that we would uh, just uh, understand functions together and uh, help the students as they prepare for the quiz Wednesday. Lord, in your name I pray. Amen. All right. So... The top hat is Now that we got that out of the way, do you guys have any questions about anything in particular? Yep. Uh, well, what, did you guys go over last what did we go over last Friday? You'd have to watch the video. Um, oh yeah, everything's on the YouTube. Um, I think, I mean I can give you a summary I suppose. I think we went over problems in the homework that we hadn't done before for the most part and perhaps some that we kind of did before but so it, it essentially we did problems that required an extra algebra step um, in order to get to the same place we were earlier in the week so before we looked at problems like less than or equal to zero so if you have one that's not less than or equal to zero but it's like less than or equal to two or something then you got to move the two to the other side and work on it until it becomes a less than equal to zero or greater than or equal to zero problem. I think that's, you know, a good bit of what we did. Other questions? Yep. No, we're going over new material. There is new material that's on the test on functions. So this uh, week we're covering sections. Um, let me see here, I'll tell you in a second. So today we're covering sections 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, maybe not all of those, but bits and pieces from 2.3, 2.4, 2.5. Um, so that's what this week, this week. Section 2.3, 2.4, and 2.5. Um, we're skipping over sections 2.1 and 2.2 uh, partly because they're like kind of just background material but also because we're going to we'll circle back to section 2.2 later which is on circles um, so this material will fill, will appear um, on the quiz and also on the test now but it's a relatively small part of the quiz so just again to explain the logic of what goes on here um, I admit it's not fair that I'm testing, I'm quizzing you on these things in some sense, um, because after all, we're just talking about it today, and then I'm going to quiz you on Wednesday, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm going to go fairly light on that material as far as the quiz goes, and um, I want the quiz to at least resemble the test. So if I just only put on the quiz the material that we covered like last week, then you'd be missing this material on the quiz, and I'd just rather it be there. So you have a sense of like what I'm going to focus on, because there's tons and tons of stuff in the book, and not all of which I'm going to test on. Right? A lot of it's kind of, I mean, it's interesting, but it's just, it doesn't really make for good test questions. And so I want to give you a heads up about what's most important in the function material on the quiz Wednesday. So if you want to be completely prepared for the quiz Wednesday, I would, I mean, one thing you could do would just be to work this week's homework. Or not all of it, but just a good chunk of it would be. But honestly, like if you just, 
focus on the examples we do, 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 do today in class, you probably will be pretty much ready for the quiz questions on functions Wednesday. Yep. I have not locked any homeworks. If Canvas is locking a homework on you, you need to email me and tell me about it so I can complain. You have to go to Canvas and click on like the Apply Learn section. If you click there, it should let you back in. I think that may be it, like Canvas. So I don't know, I, I hear different things from different people, <laughs> you know. Um, I think when that happened to somebody else I talked to, like it says something like browser, I don't even remember what it says, something, complain about something browser-wise in the My Labs, or does it just say it's locked out, or what does it say? It, it, But that doesn't make sense because the homework is not due. You shouldn't have to review homework which is not due yet. Like, okay, so after, it depends what, I mean, he may be right. It depends on like what time, okay, so like homework one is already due like weeks ago, right? So that's past due, quote unquote. So then, yeah, maybe you have to go through, like he's saying, through the review and the grade book to get to it in my labs. You should still be able to get the homework one through the, um, through what? Go to, com go to completed assignments, I'm told, you could do that. But the, uh, what I'm trying, I'm, I'm addressing a couple different issues. So some people have gotten locked out of assignments before they're due. Wow. And I don't know how that's happening, but I do know this. There's a good chance that if that happens to you, if you go into, my, if you go into Canvas and then just click under the Apply Learn section to like the homework link there, it'll let you back in. It did for one person. Um, once the homeworks are due, you're saying, um, what's your name? Olivia's telling me you can just go to completed assignments to see them from there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I personally, if I was in your position, um, once I completed a homework, I would just like go to print and print it as a PDF and stick it in a folder so I didn't have to get, go back into this evil thing called My Labs and I just had a hard copy of a PDF that I could look at independent of Canvas or My Labs or anything. I just have that PDF almost like a book and a piece of paper Almost like that, not quite that good, but it's a PDF. Um, so, yeah. So I'm sorry if you're having trouble like that. Um, do email me when you have trouble like that so I can try to help you. Um, okay, so today, yep. Oh, Go for it. Front and back. I said you can have front and back. You can put examples, Psalms, Proverbs picture of your beloved, whatever it is you want. Uh -huh. But just two sides, no three, no three sided paper. Other questions? Yep. For the what? Like if I wanted to do my notes for the quiz online mm -hmm. and then print it, would that be fine too or could, do I have to do it? Oh, it doesn't have to be handwritten. If you want to, if you want to write it out and then print it, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. It could be printed. It doesn't have to be handwritten. I do, it doesn't need to be a piece, piece of paper. It can't be like on a phone or something, that, that, to be clear. Or a tablet. Or an iPad. Or whatever else is possible. Like you got a really big wristwatch that's got a screen on it. Like I can't allow those either. Yeah. Questions? Okay, so today we're talking about functions. What's a function? I heard something in, something out. That's a, that's a good way to think of it. It's a machine, right? It's F, right? And you put X into it, right? And what comes out? F of X, right? In, out, right? So you can think of a function as a machine that takes one thing and spits it out. Now, how, how could we describe such a thing? Um, there are a few different ways, right? Descriptions of functions, what are there? Uh, number one, more often than not, we do what? We buy a formula, right? So we get like f of x equals to, you know, 
3 over x or something. Right, that's one way we can do it. Uh, we can give a formula to describe the function. Or here's another one. We could do f of x equals to x squared plus 1, right? Or we could do f of x equals to the square root of x. Here's three examples, right? Now, the, the function, we could, we could describe it by formula, right? And um, if you describe it by a formula like this, an interesting question to ask is, what are the allowed inputs, right? So, so definition, the domain is the set of allowable inputs for the function. All right. So another way to say that is it's basically the x for which f of x makes sense. Right? So what's the domain I'll, I'll, you know, for my three examples, let me write the domain for each one, okay? What's the domain for 3 over x? I'll number them just to make them different. 1, 2, 3, that way we can talk about them. Yeah, 1, 2, 3. So what's the domain of f1 of x equal to? What one thing do I have to avoid? x such that what? x is not equal to? 0, right x equal to 0 is a problem because that gives us division by 0. Now if I wanted to write the domain in interval notation, what would I write? I'll put the interval notation in red here. We do minus infinity to 0 union with 0 to infinity, all right? So on your quiz Wednesday I might say find the domain of this function, write the domain in interval notation. If I was to ask that question, what I wrote in red would be the answer for f1. Right. How about the domain of f2? What's the domain of f2? Which x are allowed inputs for this formula? Well, f2 is a polynomial, right? It's a quadratic polynomial. And fun fact, the domain of any polynomial is just the whole real line because you can add subtract, raise things to powers. It doesn't matter if they're positive or negative, zero. It's all good. The formula makes sense, independent of what x is. The domain is all real numbers. So we can just do minus infinity to infinity. There you go. That's the domain of f2. All right? How about f3? What's the domain of f3? Now here I should be careful. Um, our context in this course, it's the set of allowable, and I should really just put a parenthetical comment here, real. Real inputs. So we're going to limit the discussion in here to real valued functions of a real variable, which means the input and the output both have got to be real. All right, so if we keep it real, what does the domain for f3 have to be? What kind of numbers can we stick into a square root and get a real number back out? Positive numbers. Positive numbers. I like your positive numbers and raise you a non-negative. Let's see here, x such that x positive would just be greater than 0. That would make it work, right? But what's the square root of 0? Square root of 0 is 0, right? So non-negative will work for us, but you were like, 99.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
That's the domain. All right. Now, um, what else do you talk about? Besides domain, what else do you talk about? You talk about range, right? The range, what's the range of f? Set of all um, outputs, let's say, attained by x, attained by f. Right. Now, I don't think I'm going to ask you about, um, well, let me, let me dial it back here. Let me not make promises here. Uh, okay, so um, I will say this. There are some questions in the homework about range, which I think are inappropriate for the test, because basically they're testing your ability to graph functions, and that's not something um, we're going to quite get to before test one. Right? We'll talk more about the method for graphing after test one. Okay, so typically what's going to happen here on the quiz or the test is I'm going to give you a graph and ask you questions about it, right? The exception to that would be a line. We will learn how to graph lines in terms of slope and point intercept and all that. So, right. So what I'm trying to tell you is the, the, the range, really, you could see from the graph. What's a graph? So two, like, I mean, let me just put them up here. So the first one, if we draw the graph of this, and I'll draw the second one up here, just for the sake of discussion here. All right, so first one, we've got three over x, all right, y equals three over x. What's the graph of that look like? Well, roughly speaking, that thing looks something like this. Right. So that's the graph of 3 over x. The graph of x squared plus 1, it looks like, like this. We will learn how to make these graphs systematically after test 1, all right? There's the graph of x squared plus 1 y equals x squared plus 1. And what's the y equals square root of x look like? Well, that looks like it's like half of a parabola turned sideways. It's like this. All right. So, I mean, you can put some arrows on here if you want. They keep going and going, you know. And you could even put arrows here and here. I don't always put the arrows like that. But here you've got y equals square root of x. Now, again, um, these would be provided for you at this point. I don't, I think you guys probably, most, about half of you probably could create these graphs on your own. Half of you are like, oh, I used a graphing calculator before. I don't know how to do it on my own. I'm lonesome, just with paper and pen, whatever. Um, it's not hard, but again, after test one. So these would be provided, these would be provided for you. But if you had these, could you tell me what the range would be for F1? What's the range for F2? What's the range for F3? What's the range for F2? What's the range for F3? All real numbers, not zero, right? It's, it's zero, right? Is it zero or is it no, you're no, you're right. It's it's all real numbers, not zero. So this is, um, it's a, in fact, it's the same as the, it's kind of um, funny, but it's the same as the the domain as it happens. So, right. So that what that is is it's all the y values. So if we look at points on the graph, right? Like for example, this point right here. If we look at this point right here, this would be, say, 1, comma, f of 1. What would that be, f1 of 1? If I plug in 
1 into here, I get 3, right? So my, my picture's not quite right, is it? This should be 1 comma 3, that point right there. So another way to say the range, it's the set of all outputs obtained by f of x. In other words, it's all possible y values for the graph. y equals f of x. So like f1, it, the only thing it doesn't hit is 0. What's the, what's the range of f2? Yeah. It does go to, it goes as big as you want, that's right, it goes to infinity. So I could, I could start there if you wanted. Where does it start? What's the lowest y value that F2's graph has? <coughs> I heard a 1. Yeah, is that included or excluded? It's included. It's in, yeah, it's included. That's the vertex of the parabola, right? How about square root function? What's the, what's the range of that? It's kind of funny. It's the, it's the same as the domain again. That's just a quirk of my examples. So, because the, you can go from zero here, right, to as big as you want. Right. So one way to talk about a function, and this is our usual way of doing it, is to give a formula, all right? Then you can figure out its, its domain from just figuring out the set of allowed x values, right? We didn't have to draw any pictures for that, did we? Easy. And then the range is the set of allowed outputs. Um, easiest to figure out the range if you have a picture of the graph of the function, right? So what, what is the graph of a function? What is, I mean, technically, what's the graph? The graph of a function, right? It's equal to x comma y such that x is in the domain of f. and y is equal to f of x. So this is the graph. And actually, if you think about it logically, another way we could describe a function is just by giving its graph, right? If you give the graph of the function as a picture, okay, or as a set of pairs, that's a way to describe a function. So this is another way, this, you know, if, if you give If you're given a graph of f, this defines f. Let me show you a couple of examples of that, right? So um, I suppose um, this would be in some sense, we had examples one, two, and three here already, right? <laughs> you could call this example one, example two, example three, right? So let's call this example four. You could be told something like this, graph of f. Okay, here it goes. Um, one comma two, two comma seven. 3, 8. Right. If you're told this defines the function, what does this mean? This means that f of 1 is equal to fill in the blank. f of 2, fill in the blank. f of 3, you fill in the blank. What do you got there? So like pairs in the graph are of the form x comma f of x, right? So with that understanding, if I have 1 comma 2 is in the graph, this means that 1 f of 1 is equal to 2. f of 2 is equal mm -hmm. to 7. f of 3, you guys tell me what it is. 8, right. 
Okay, so we can define a function by a list of pairs if the domain is finite, right? If the domain is not finite, we'd be writing lists of pairs all day long and we'd never get to the end of it, right? So this is kind of of limited use, this kind of thing, right? Um, example four, well, okay, before I go on though, you guys tell me, what's the domain and the range of this function? Yeah, one, two, three. Not, not careful, not an interval. We need the curly brackets here because it's just the set containing the points one, two, and three. What's the range? Um, two, seven, and eight. Two, seven, and eight, yeah. Very silly. If we were to draw a picture of it in the xy plane to plot the graph, what would it look like? Yeah, I heard three dots. Yeah, so we do what? One comma two, which um, I'll put approximately, let's see, you make this one, two, three. I'm going to what? All the way up to eight, so four. This won't be quite the scale, but one, two is roughly speaking here. Here, I'll make it a different color. I'll do the graph in red. Here we go. The graph is this subset. It says this point, 2, 7. This point, and 3, 8. This point. So there you go. That's a plot of the graph of f. This is very different than my examples 1, 2, and 3, right? Which were nice, continuous, not weird examples, right? But your book is full of weird examples, I, and your homework is full of these weird examples. So I should talk about them, yeah? Mm. Yeah. What's another way we could describe the function in example four? We could use a picture, right? The other way that you can describe a function like this is with a, um, a diagram. So the way this diagram would look would be something like this. One, two, Three. So I put the, the domain on the one on the left, and I put the range on the right, which was what? Um, let's say 278. And so the picture is kind of silly in this case. It's like this. And I don't think your book puts arrows, but goodness, I like to put arrows because it's like this. One, go one goes to two, two goes to seven, three goes to eight. This defines, this mm -hmm. diagram can, de de can define function. All right. Can you guys, anybody tell me the other way to define a function? So I, I, I told you formula graph as a set of ordered pairs, right? Um, yeah, and I, I kind of cheated with two. I said the graph is a set of ordered pairs, right? But I would also say that the graph could just be a picture like this, right? So maybe I should say two has two parts, right? Like <laughs> part A of number two is just like a set of ordered pairs. This only works for finite examples. Part B is like a picture. A picture could define a graph, All right? I'll, I'll expand on that in a future example here. Th three, the diagram, what was four, would you say? Um, like a table, or a, like the thing with the circles? A table, a, a thing with the circles, oh. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the, what's My it? My sister is taking out the two, so she's like, I'm not Oh, <laughs> a thing with the circles? It had like circles with domain in it, and the circles with the range in it, it had arrows. Oh. Oh, yeah, I love those pictures. I had to go look at the answer first, because I didn't know what it was. Yeah, I, I like those pictures. Um, <laughs> I'll do that next. But yeah, table. A table is another thing we could do. Um, this same function we're talking about, example four, in the table, tabular form. And again, tabular form really only works um, if the function has a finite set of values to completely encapsulate it. But you can just put x here and f of x there, like so. Make yourself a handy dandy table, like this. And you put, you know, the x is here and the y is over here. 
right? So this is yet another way of communicating the same information as example four. Now you can make a table of values for a function even if it's not a complete table of values for the function, right? Like I could make a table of values for my example one, two, or three. It just wouldn't be a complete table, right? Because there's an infinite number of values that one, two, and three take on. Yeah, I can't just list all those. <clears throat> okay, so an important question to ask is what is not a function? You know, like, okay, so I've given you examples of functions. Yep. Is it when, like, one of them repeats? One of them repeats, like when one of them repeats. I think that's kind of it. Like, so let me put it in this way. The function is a single valued assignment. of f of x for each x in domain of f. Um, in other words, going back to our original machine picture, a function, if it's a function, when you put one input in, you don't get two outputs. You just get one output, right? You don't get, you don't get two, you don't get three, you don't get infinitely many. You just get one output. So let me show you a couple of examples. Um, example five. If we had this, one, two, three, um, four, and then outputs one, two, three, four, let's say five, all right? And you were given the following diagram. One goes to one, one goes to two like this. 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 4, 4 goes to 5. This diagram would not be a function. Why? Why is this not a function? Yeah, we have two y values for one x value, right? We have is f of 1 f of 1 would be equal to 1, and f of 1 would also be equal to 2, right? Which one do you pick? <laughs> right. Would that, I mean, that's not a function is the bottom line. What would this example look like in the pair notation? So you could be asked, example 6 is, here it goes, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, um, 4, 5, the graph of a function. By the way, your book um, might just say, is it a function? It doesn't even say, is it a graph of a function? I like to distinguish between a function and its graph. That's just my own way of thinking. I think of a function as a mapping, that's why. I think of it as a machine that takes an input to an output. Your book puts forth the view that the graph is the function. That's Anyway, so right here, this is equivalent. See this right here is equivalent to that picture. See this right here? So in this notation, you can tell if you don't have a function, if you've got two pairs that have the same x but different y, that means it's not a function, right? So you see that right there? This right here, problematic. This right here tells me not a function. Because for those two pairs to be in that graph means f of 1 is 1, but f of 1 is also 2. And this you cannot do. Do you guys remember graphically how do we decide something's not a function? We do what? The pencil. Wait a minute. The pencil what? I'm gonna erase this here. 
put your pencil vertically on the graph and it hits the graph at two different points. Hmm. I like it. Does anybody have ever, ever heard of that? What did you call it, guys? The vertical line test, right? So, or the vertical pencil test, I guess, <laughs> right? Um, what if you don't have a pencil? You're in trouble, right? <laughs> you have to have a pencil, you're in math? Yeah. I write all my solutions in pen these days. But that's just because I'm arrogant. <laughs> also because I have a whiteout pen, so it doesn't matter. Mostly, though, because scanning pencil is a drag. Scanning pen, easy. Scanners like pen. Scanners pencil, you had to mess with the settings on the scanner to get pencil to, to, to scan worth anything. So at some point in my life, I decided, oh, fine, I'll just work in pen for solutions anyway. So <clears throat> is a given graph which is, you know, in the xy plane, the graph of a function. See, there's a difference. So I'll just tell you, this is one of the sections we skipped. One of the, um, you know, things we, we, I skipped over. Section 2.2 .2 basically is about this. This is the solution set of what? x squared plus y squared equals to 1, right? That is a graph in the xy plane. So the concept of graph is more general than the graph of a function. Like general graphs in the xy plane, what do they look like? They look like anything you can imagine pretty much, right? Like here's a graph in the xy plane, behold. Okay, there you go. That is a graph in the xy plane. I mean, it's a subset of points in the xy plane. It, it's, it's a totally general idea, all right? Is that, is either one of these the graph of a function, right? What does it mean to be the graph of a function? So let's look at this. If, you, if they, if let's, let's try this vertical line they're talking about. How's that go? How's that go for us? If we draw a vertical line here, like this, this vertical line, what happens? We hit this point and we hit that point, right? And so here, maybe we're at, oh, I don't know, a half, right? Suppose we're at a half, what would that mean? Half squared plus y squared equals to one, so what's y equal to? Y squared is equal to uh, 3 fourths y is equal to, well, it turns out, plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. So for a given input value of 1 half, mm -hmm. we have to output both, you know, 1 half minus the square root of 3 over 2, and also we have to output the square root of 3 over 2. But we can't do that, right? We cannot have, we cannot have f of 1 half equal to plus and minus the square root of 3 over 2. This is not a function, right? It's double valued, right? Someone else has that sneeze in a later section. I've discussed it with them. They said they're not in this section, so I, I, I've figured out that I have two different people with the same sneeze. It's interesting. Maybe cousins, or perhaps second cousins. I don't know. I haven't studied sneezes, sneezes that deeply. I'm not sure, but anyway. So um, <clears throat> not a function, right? So it fails. The, anytime you have a, if there exists a vertical line that you can pass through the graph and you hit two points, it's not a function because if it did, what that vertical line passing through the graph and hitting two points means is that the value of the function would have to output not just one thing, but a bunch of things. It's even worse for this one, right? If I take this vertical line through here, it turns out that this function's got to output this, 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 I mean, a bunch of value. I mean, it's even worse, right? 
So to state, state, it, state it carefully, the vertical line test says Um, y equals, you know, excuse me, this way, a given graph is the graph of a function, uh, I, I don't want to say is, is, is not, is not the graph of a function if there exists a vertical line which intersects the graph at more than one point. And it, and it can be mostly fine. It just takes one, one vertical line to spoil the whole thing. You know, like uh, what example am I on here? Um, seven, I suppose. I guess this was example seven. I can't count. And this was example eight. Example nine, I suppose. So if I had the graph, all right, minding its own business, everything's hunky dory like that, right? Here's y equals f of x, it's given. And I add a point. Right there. This is the graph. That one annoying extra point right there, right, is enough. It, it makes us fail the vertical line test. See, because we can look at this vertical line right here, and we would do what? We intersect in two points. Fail vertical line test. Therefore, not a function. All right, not the graph of a function, to be clear. There is one other <clears throat> way we often describe functions, especially on a test. This makes a nice question, which is. <clears throat> Well, there, I mean, a couple of nice test questions. Let me see if I have time for both. One is really easy. Um, we'll start out with the easy one, all right? f of x equals to x cubed minus 7. All right? find f of minus 1. So that's like the, one of the first things that you have to learn how to do with a function, right? Is just to evaluate the function. So what is that? That means we plug minus 1 in, right? Minus 1 cubed, minus 7, which is? Minus 1 minus 7, which is? Minus 8. Right. Now, sometimes we we uh, we make it a little bit less comfortable. We say something like, evaluate, you know, or say also, what would like f of a plus h be? What would that be? Well, then we have to plug in a plus h for x. So we do like a plus h quantity cubed minus 7. And so that would be that. Would be that. There are like three, four problems in your homework which are kind of like this. They give you the formula. They give you an expression. They say plug the expression into x, evaluate the function, you know. Some of them say simplify. I'm not going to say simplify on this one. Example 11. And this one is nice. Okay, so sometimes you don't have a formula. All right, sometimes you don't have a formula. But what you do have 
is a picture, right? So maybe we start at, say, um, minus 4, comma, 5, all right? And then we go like this to this point over here, which we'll say is um, 3, comma, minus 1, all right? And then I will go like this up here to, um, I will go from 3, comma, 3 all the way over here to 6, comma, 6. All right. So what can you, so this is what's given. This is what's given. And then I can ask questions about it. What, what questions could I ask about this? You guys tell me some questions I could ask. I'll start rattling them off here. F of minus 4 equals 2, fill in the blank. F of 3 equals, fill in the blank. F of 6 equals, fill in the blank. The domain of F of X is what? The range of F of X is what? Where, and then here's more interesting questions. Where is F decreasing? What do we mean by decreasing? We mean the graph is what? Going down as we read left to right, right? So it would be decreasing where? F is decreasing on minus 4 over to 3. Where is F increasing? How about 3 to 6, right? Does F have to be either increasing or decreasing? I mean, it could do other... It could stay constant also, right? That's another possibility. So you guys tell me, what is f of minus 4 equal to? I heard 5. Now how did you know that? You knew that because this pair was given on the graph, right? Because of this point right here. How about f of 3? What's it equal to? Negative 1 or is it 3? Which is it? It's it's 3 because it's up here. Now that circle is not, you're right. Now if that circle was colored in, I'd be out of luck. This wouldn't be a function because then it would fail the vertical line test at that gluing point, at that point of 3. But, it, it, but it's not filled in, which means f of 3 is governed by where it's filled in, which is 3. And then f of 6 is 6. What's the domain? The domain is the allowed x values, right, which are what? Minus 4 all the way over to? 6, so minus 4 to 6. What's the range? So what are the y values which are hit, attained rather? Which y values are attained by the graph? Is minus 1 attained? It's not, right? So to think about y values, what I do is I think about horizontal lines, dragging horizontal lines over the graph. Where do they intersect, right? So I start with my, I think about a horizontal line like down here. You know, at y equals minus 1. No intersection, right? So that's, but it's almost included, right? Once I get past minus 1, we start hitting points on the graph. So what I want is minus 1 not included to where? Yeah, I get all the way up to, to 6, right? So, and 6 is included. Now, this graph fails what's called the horizontal line test, right? Because if you hit a horizontal line here, you hit two points. That's not a problem, though. That just means this function is not what's called one-to-one, -one, which we'll talk about more after test one, all right? So anyway, um, that's most of it. The thing we have left to talk about this week is lines. I need to remind you about like how to find the equation of a line between two points, how to calculate the slope, how to graph it. That's the other parallel perpendicular. That's what's missing from today. There will be like a token pair of questions on the quiz. You might still get it if you remember parallel. If you want to study parallel and perpendicular, jump to the end of your homework. The last two problems are on it. So. <clears throat>